Okay. Okay, three, two, one, I think we're on. Okay, so welcome back to part two of the uh, interview that I'm doing with uh, Mr. Lee Masters. Um, we had part one. Part one ended in a interesting style. We, we, we got um, some really good information out for the first half. And then unfortunately, um, we were just speaking about it now, the gremlins got into the system and um, ruined the connection. So we had to sort of stop, re-edit, I'm in a different shirt tonight. I don't know, are you in the same kit? I don't know, it's different. I'm in the same kit, yeah. Ah, he's kept it, he's kept it similar. He's kept the continuity going. Excellent. Love it. Continuity, absolutely. Yeah, it's all, it's all good. So, yeah. Um, I don't remember where we where we ended up. I think we ended up, so we were sort of chatting a little bit about, um, we went through your background and stuff and some really interesting information around the scrolls and and, and the bits that you've got there from from, um, from the jiu-jitsu that you do. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think we were sort of like looking at. Um, I'll open up with a good question then, with, with, with a big, a big sort of open-winded question. Open-winded. I don't know what that word is. <laughs> I'll just make it. I'll make it up as I go along now. Um, what? How do you define? How would you personally define success from what you've done and what you've achieved? And um, yeah, so I suppose how do you define success for yourself? Okay. Um, well, first of all. Um, the I, I'm dyslexic, so um, I think I said in the uh, other part that uh, there's a lot of bullying going on at school initially. Right. Um, I one of one of the best things that was ever said to me was uh, by a tutor of mine was that um, because of the dyslexia, he said, "I don't care what you read." just read it doesn't have to be grammatically correct or anything you're, yeah. you're exercising um which is actually exactly the same as the physical exercise right so you don't necessarily have to um go every night down the dojo put your gi on or or put your fancy fancy uh brazilian jiu-jitsu pants on um <laughs> to train and um so my 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 idea of success is is basically happiness. Yeah. Um, I I have worked hard over the years. Um, I've been very lucky as well, but I've taken the opportunities that uh, have presented to me. Um, and it, it's it's like it's like the gradings. It's like it's like life in general, isn't it? You you have to work hard to 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 get what you want um and i uh, i'm really happy in what i'm doing a lot of people think i'm crazy because i go back and forth to the uk with the two clinics that i run um and i suppose i probably am a little bit crazy it does help me to sort of it helps me to um train as well so when when i'm in the uk the first thing i do as i get out of bed is actually hit a, a focus mitt um before doing anything that tends to be frowned upon by the wife if i'm actually getting up and, and hitting that yeah i, I can imagine yeah <laughs> just strangely <laughs> enough i get into trouble for him and for, for spraying deodorant in the morning when when, when it's when it's yeah. a bit early so I'm, I'm not sure how that works for you but fair uh, <laughs> absolutely absolutely and it, we used to have in the uh in the flat above the clinic we used to have a um a like a, a type of bob type um object and i used to get up to the to the uh go to the toilet three four o'clock in the morning before going to the toilet i would then go into the front room hit this a few times and then go to the toilet and then go back to bed okay and when i tell this to different people they like what the hell and i'm like well the, the stimulus is is wanting to go for a wee but that can be a stimulus of a noise downstairs whatever the optimal time of being burgled has has been said between three and four o'clock in the morning yeah so again you to be combatively ready you have to have the pathways and everything functional like that and that's i think that's one of the major differences in um combative thinking and um combat sports mm -hmm. so 
Um, and yeah, so I went off off piece a little bit, but that's that's I'm happy. My wife and kids are happy. You know, they they see me go every week. <laughs> that makes them happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you think um, that, um, do you think that, sorry, I'll just put in, do you think that like, yeah, no, no. Um, like Ryan's success and your happiness around success and, and sort of touching a bit more on the martial arts, did, did um, a lot of people, a lot of mentors of mine talk about um, the process being more, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Be more fulfilling than the actual end goal. Would you say that was the case? So for yourself, like for, you know, when you've hit a grade in a specific grade in or something, do you feel that the process, yeah. you know, I'm sort of loading the question. Oh, uh, absolutely. It's, it's a bit like, um, I remember when I took my, my, um, uh, black belt and this consisted of, um, a three day training. This was under my father in, in, uh, karate. And because we only trained in the uh, garage at that point, there was only about four of us that trained. So one of the things I had to do is enter a local competition. I had to get um, um, placements in both the kata and the um, and the fighting. One one day would be just full on uh, kata work, uh, and then uh, some of the supplementary stuff from uh, the Okinawan um, karate, and also um, punch bag stuff. But one of the other real big things that uh, he made me do was to uh, sit in the hall stance for um, uh, for an hour. And that was an absolute killer, you know. Yeah. I trained up for that. He told me that I was going for my black belt. And uh, so at that point, he took my brown belt off. All I trained was with a gi. I didn't have any belt. He, he actually had one of his old students uh, had been to Japan and he'd got my black belt and he just hung it up on the uh, on the wall in the dojo. And he said, at any point when you think you can't do this and you can't sit for more than an hour, that's what you're going for. Mm -hmm. Which when you're young and everything else, the black belt is is the, uh, the age old thing, you know, and, and, I, and I did it. I did the hour. He'd, he'd done a couple of things where he was hitting me uh, with a stick across the back and all this, very much a karate kid thing. And and then I he'd go, he turned around and he does this very often. He'll, he'll get you to sit in a stance and then he'll piss off for five minutes and come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he'll have a cup of tea and go, that looks hard. And then he'll, you know, do this. So he went off and, and as he went off, he turned around and he went, you've passed. And I, I literally collapsed. My legs were shaking. My my mum then came in and she had a big jug of water and just chucked it over me and went, congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, and then I always remember because I, I then thinking, well, where's the sparks out of my fingers? Where's the magic? You know, there's no magic. It doesn't change. It's it, as no. simple as that. It's the same as the higher levels, you know, the, the, the secrets of jujitsu. This it's not magic. It's it, it's it's hard work. It's it's learning along the path. You're you're looking for stuff, and you're you're actually educating yourself yourself all the time, and that's really the secret of of the traditional martial arts. Um, mm -hmm. That's what makes it different. I I like that because you have you have the spiritual side of things. Um, but then you also have the, the the more combative side of things as well, and the the bunker, which means um, um, the cultural side as well. Why why you do this? Why do you do that? You know. So, um, and the success again. You know, I'm Minkyo Kaidan. Um, I'm one of well, second Westerner to be the Minkyo Kaidan, and do I feel any different? No. No, you know, you just got to keep on training. The, in the traditional style, style, there's only five levels. So it takes a long time to get there and you have to build up the trust of the sensei as well for them to give you certain stuff. But, you know, it, it's, it, we have in, the, in our form, we have this whole thing about a circle. 
So you start off on your knees and then you finish up on your knees and then you go back and you redo it all again. And this is how it's continuously. And it's a bit like life, isn't it? You know, you start off relying on people and you end up relying on people. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's what it teaches you, I think, is more about um, about the not just the um, the hard stuff, the training stuff. You know, if you want to beat the living crap out of someone, then it's quite easy to learn some th- techniques to do that. You know, depending on what country you're in and everything else, the availability of Various weapons, that's quite easy. It doesn't take much to pull a trigger, does it? Or stab someone, as we no, know no. in the UK. No, exactly. It, 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 that's <clears> the case. I was going to say, um, so at the higher levels of, of um, the style that you do, um, obviously, like in jiu-jitsu, in, in, in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, they'd have like, um, I don't know, I think it goes 10th. Like, it goes all the way up to like, you've got, is it corral belts and then like, grandma is there a similar sort of thing we with, with yourselves and stuff is that or is that is, is, we just have um no we just have what we have is the first two um levels are what we call um um akili gami menjo which basically is a folded piece of paper that yeah. says that you've you're a certain grade in a certain system mm-hmm. then on the third level you have um, a scroll a bit like like i showed you it's called uh, uh mokuroku yeah. And Mokoroku only means um, catalog, so it shows a catalog of techniques. Yeah. Then you have Menkyo, which literally means license, and then Menkyo Kaidem, which means complete license. So that would actually be sort of thought of as as a sort of as really as like a tenth fan, I suppose. Okay, You've yeah. completed the full system and everything else, you know. I don't think I don't think myself as any temp Dan or anything like that. You know, I've worked hard in what I've done, and that's it. You know, yeah. um, no, that's it it's what it does is you you know all the techniques. So if you've got and principles, right? So if you if I show you ten techniques, then that's what that means. Um, and then you then put it into different scenarios. Okay, brilliant. No, I was going to say so. Um, yeah, no, that, that, that's fantastic. It's a fantastic answer. Um, you mentioned on the last video about um, having done some sort of some work with. You said you live. You, well, you, you we spoke about you living in Sweden and traveling between here and, and Sweden every every couple of weeks. Um, yeah, about working with some of their their sort of their um armed, armed forces as well as the police was it what yeah would you be willing to sort of share a little bit with that as to what you've done with that or, or how, yeah. how they want i suppose out of it. well again how that came about was um a guy who was in he was the head of the combatives for the swedish military and um he in in, in generalized combatives of the west um there's there's off there's a, a general feeling that um, William Fairburn actually did the system that that I do, yeah. um, and I had a at, at first I had a, a few uh, people on the internet, you know, various um, uh, what do you call it um, chat rooms, and I was like, mm, don't know about that, you know, and then then. In the, um, what's the book written by? Uh, the Fairburn book that's written about his life. They've, they've suddenly changed it and said it's uh, Shinno Shindaru. Right. Which I find is a little bit convenient, to be quite honest. Right. Um, because it, that's, that's one of the parents of Tenjin Shindaru, which is what I do. Unfortunately, there is no written evidence to say that he did either of those. Yeah. As yet, you know, they, there is a um, there's videos of him, um, uh, not videos. There's there's um, pictures of him with his uh, sensei, um, Akeda. Um, there's a couple of pictures of him doing a two man technique, which does actually come from um, 
that had come from Shino Shindaru. Um, and I'm still on the search to to try and prove whether that's right or wrong. I think just just um, as a, just but, as a uh, sorry, mate, just as a um, an yeah, interview right. with that. Um, I do have some listeners on this who, who, who probably don't know who William Fairburn is. Um, do you want to explain it, or shall I? Do, do, do you want to? Do, do, you, do you know? I can go. Yeah. yeah um, go. So um, William Fairburn is possibly within within sort of self-defense it's in, I don't know, would you describe him as the godfather of self-defense? Would that be a fair assumption somewhere in that region? Um, a man who was... Um, certainly the godfather of gutter fighting, yeah. Yeah, basically. So he, he um, a lot of, a lot of the techniques he, he, do, he did was, um, he was, I think, uh, a police inspector with the Shanghai police, maybe, or yeah. someone, someone like that, yeah. during the, the 20s and 30s. And he um, he joined up with another guy called Sykes Fairbairn Sykes. Yeah. Um, they they were quite uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they, they were the forefathers of sort of combat combats within the Second World War. From what I, that that's my my take on it. Um, a lot of their techniques were used by um, OSS in this in the states um, SOE these you know secret organizations if you look at the command any, anybody that hasn't seen it um the commando dagger is is the fairbairn sykes commando dagger is is seen as as one of his or their creations of a very thin stiletto dagger that, that, that was used um and a lot of the lineage that's taken place i think come comes from from them to be or seems you know in some pretty respects, much yeah yeah i don't know that might be the right way of looking at it but. I, I think uh no no I, I would say what what they the pair of them were was um basically um the godfathers to modern modern combat yeah changing the rules changing the perimeters of the rules you know going away from things like prize fighting yeah, you know, you you get in. In um, he also did um, a kung fu system as well. Yeah, uh, whilst I think in Shanghai, so you know, different palm hill strikes, not just the usual punching, um, eye gouging, all this sort of thing. Which you know, prize fighting they they used to do eye, eye gouging, yeah. but uh, and probably still do a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah, no, it's some. Um... He sort of took um, it away from the traditional stuff. Yeah, I think that 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 does segue quite nicely into the next question, which I've got for you, which was um I'll put it down here. How do you think personal safety training or self-defense has evolved over the years? And I think we've sort of we sort of talked a little bit about that already, haven't we? But um Yeah, I I think I think the major difference between um it, the the principles and the methodology are pretty much the same, you know, yeah. and they've been the same since the beginning of time. Since you know, if you look at Cain and Abel in the Bible, you know, Cain picks up a rock, gives him a good old smack in. Yeah, I think it was Cain or Abel. One of the yeah, someone that. someone someone didn't come out of it very well. Put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And in Japanese martial arts, it goes back to the ages of the gods, where one puts one on the ground and then basically gives him a kick in. Yeah. You know, so there's there's not really much difference in that from when, whenever that time was to now. Yeah. The, the major difference, I think, is the, is the equipment used. Obviously, scenarios change, you know, so from a Japanese point of view, they're sitting on their knees. You know, I I train like I'm sitting here now. I I would turn around, start hitting a pad, whatever. Um, so the the situations and the scenarios have changed, but but the things of are, are getting better and better with um, um, the electronic world as well. So I think you mentioned in the last one about the shock knives. Yeah, that's you also it. have these body belts that you use in firearms training. You have uh, stimulation, which is like a, a, a small um, paintball that, that's fired by your normal weapon. Um, so that's evolved even more so from that point of view. That is that is pretty much how I see it anyway. Yeah. No, I mean, it's... 
it's, um, I don't know. I think that there's. I don't think that the the the, uh, the alert level or or anything like that's changed. I think it's always been a constant. There's always been there's always been danger and there's always been sort of you know issues around you know looking after yourself and stuff. But you know it's just the the method the method changes, doesn't it? You know humans will always be humans, as we've yeah. all said that you know. Absolutely. Came, Kane it's able with a rock, I think it was, yeah, and then, you know, yeah. That, that's, yeah. that's where it ends up. And it's and the then, same if you look at um, Neolithic, uh, when, they, when they're finding the tools. Yeah. You know, how many of these tools we think are using to, to actually um, cut, you know, the meat and everything, but then what if your, your, your brother suddenly starts taking a bit more of your meat? Well, all of a sudden, you're just going to start doing that. So how yeah. many of those so-called tools are actually murder weapons as well? That's it. That's exactly yeah. it. That's the, yeah. Um, do you think that self-defence um, should be taught in schools? Do you think it, it's it's talking of evolution and stuff, I suppose? Do you think it's, um, it's something that should be taught from an early age, like within a curriculum other than... You know, I personally um, tell people that um, when they say, oh, can my kid come along and, and train with you? And I, I generally say no. Um, I, I generally point them in the direction of um, judo. Okay. Um, I feel that judo is good. Um, it, it, it builds up confidence for the, for the kids and, mm. and for adults. It breaks the um, um, the the distance, the touchy feely distance when someone's yeah. grabbing you, you know. And and kids are pretty; they like a good roughage around on the floor, you know. So again, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu would be good for that with the ground fighting. Um, karate, you know, I started karate when I was thirteen, but that was under my father, so you know, yeah. I I was under strict rulings. Self-defense, I think, I certainly feel that self-defense, but not on a, on a physical basis. I, f I feel that maybe, you know, this is one of the things that I, I sort of have a little bit of a, a gripe about, really. When, when you see people doing um, self-defense courses, six or eight weeks courses, you've got to train whatever weapon you're going to use. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So... If, if you're teaching kids how to strike or whatever, um, that's the first thing they're going to do in a punch-up, as opposed to perhaps getting in close and then having a wrestle. Um, I personally, and I think this might actually answer one of your other questions, but we'll see. Um, I personally think that self-defense classes should be for adults should be um, situational awareness, putting through people through different situational awareness or situations, mm -hmm. making them aware how to use the environment around them to see, for example, me using your spectacles to see the, the reflection of my ugly face, mm -hmm. you know, using things like that. So they're, they, they, they're more switched on. Yeah. And then if you're going to teach a, a, a physical technique, it's no good telling, teaching them to punch. You know, it takes a while to get the, the knuckle to, to do that sort of thing. So I always say one weapon and then use it in every shape and form that you can use it in. Mm -hmm. So the amount of, and this again goes back to my childhood. So, when I when when I first went down to the, the martial arts um, shop with my father and I said, I want to get a pair of nunchuckers then. He's like, okay. So we went down there. I picked up these foam things and he's like, what are you doing? So I said, nunchuckers. He's like, nah, wood. I was like, wood? He goes, yeah, because otherwise you won't um, learn if you if when you hit yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the next minute I'm training with these nunchuckers on um, tires. So I'm hitting the tires through, you know. How many people do this 
it's the same with Kato. I, you know, when I was, um, how old was I? 21, 22. Um, I was um, a British Kato champion of uh, NACMAS, I think it was, um, back uh, over in uh, Crystal Palace. You know, I see my pictures of me doing these patterns and I think I know what I'm doing, you know, and I'm not, I don't know half of it. Yeah. But I think I know. And that's a very, very bad sense of uh, confidence. It's like putting a, um, a loaded gun into someone's hand again. There you go, you're safe now. And the next minute they've just blown their foot off, mm. you know. So yeah. people need to understand that aspect that, if you're going to use use a weapon, they need to um, be able to strike things with it, but they also need to um, do it from every angle. You know, if I'm a palm here, and you know, if you again, if you look at William Fairburn, he's striking. You know, if we we like to strike from the back, strike here, whatever. You know, it's got to be at every angle. <laughs> Okay, I suppose it, that that leads nicely into sort of a, probably a bit of a clickbaity question then in terms of what 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 do you what would you think? I mean, it's probably you know a, a piece of string type question. What do you think is the best technique to use in that regards? Then is there anything that you would be your go to for situational? Yeah, situational awareness. Yeah, as Mister Miyagi said. Best defense, not be there. Yeah. If I have to, if I have to hit someone, bite someone, kick someone, knee someone, headbutt someone, spike them, whatever, it's it's already finished because that's going to change my life forever. Yeah. You know, and if you're putting yourself, you know, I was having a uh, conversation with someone today, and they're basically SWAT over here. But they're a breacher, yeah. You know, and I, and and they're saying, "Well, what can you give me?" I go, "Well, I can give you things to to disengage someone because you're breaching, so you're going in there, and someone you know might be there just grabs you, so then you're going to use the breacher to perhaps just to whack it off or push them into the wall to then enable the rest of the team to go in. Yeah, you know, it's got to be it's it's got to be fit for purpose it's no good me you know i i am firearms trained and i've been taught by um some of the guys from the special forces and it's no good me going oh i'm going to rely on my clock when i'm in in the uk because that won't get me anywhere well no. will it'll get me inside yeah um, so you have to you have to be aware that, uh, you know, you, you to, to stay out. Actually, the best thing, trust your instinct. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. I totally if agree. Walk, I, I genuinely totally agree. I think, you know, what was the thing? If it, um, if, it, if it looks like something and smells like something, it probably is something. Or, you know, or different yeah. words, you know, you could you go... Uh, if it doesn't look right, it probably isn't right to a degree. So, Absolutely. You know. Um, Absolutely. My, Kelly, have you heard of Kelly McCann? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. He's a combatant. Yeah, so um, one of the things that he, he teaches is if you're armed and you go for your weapon or you check to see if your weapon's there, your mind's already registered. It's all going to go tits up, basically. Yeah. So, therefore, get out. You know, if you're going, oh, yeah, this is a bit. And, yeah, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. So, Do you think um, do you think fitness plays a part in personal safety? I have conflicting views over this, and I, I have my views on it, and I know a lot of other self-defence instructors have different views on it, but what do you think around it? Once again, you've got to be fit for purpose, right? So mm. I'm, I'm, I pull people around all day long uh, for my job as, as an osteopath <laughs> not as a yeah. master. Um, and I'm fit for that purpose um, there's a lot of research showing that you you have enough energy 
in your in each cell for or body to to have 12 uh, seconds of fight in you. Mm -hmm. 12 seconds in a fight is a long time, right? Yeah. Um, and I think when it gets down to it, if you are unable to um, um, get out of the situation, where if it's a physical situation, and and then run, then I think your body will take over and run anyway. Yeah, that's fair enough. You know, you you don't want to be running around on the floor. That's the last thing you want to do anyway. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's you have to be fit, of course, but. Um. Yeah, I think it's um. I think from speaking to different people, there's 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 you know the train of thought all around exactly what you're saying about the um. You know that having enough energy in your body already to to be able to manage that, and you always you are going from a from a you know a, a, a standing start position almost sometimes if there's if it's a if it's a, an attack that comes in you know spontaneous attack almost. Um, I think from my point of view, it's it's um, I'm a little bit led by professional things where you've got people in in roles where they're having to use violence and it's 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 managing themselves but also managing their own that their their what they're doing with that afterwards as well and sort of being being able to be cognitive with it. So you know it's 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 one of them it strings and roundabouts from a purely self-defense point of view. I, I think, I yeah. think you, know, you know you don't necessarily need it but it's uh, I don't know. I think there's it's it's a bit like the age old uh, American cops, isn't it? You know the donut eaters. You know they there there was um, quite a lot of evidence where they they were getting. I I I do uh, sports shooting, so um, and you're running around shooting different targets. Blah blah blah. Now what they did is they introduced that to the police rather than just doing range shooting. Mm -hmm. because what they found is the police were running after these people, drawing their guns, and because they're so out of breath and, and so unfair, they were missing people at, like, two metres. Yeah. Well, you know. And that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, it, you know, in, in, in very high-stress situations, um, I think that, you know, it, it's changing, I suppose, from the from the... The personal safety head to the the professional sort of um, you know you go from a, a a personal safety situation into a um, a professional situation if that's the case with in regards to police officers um, it's yeah. having that fitness to be able to not you know I think I read a report of sort of evidence as well saying that there's um, you know are you are you a health and safety liability because if you're not able to function correctly and, and, and sort of do that type of thing afterwards? And I think that's I think that's a fair I personally think that's a fair one if you're not able to, you know, if somebody was in in, in the doo-doo, in the shit and that, you know, it's it's um if they're grappling with somebody on the floor, are you able to assist? And know it's a di it's a different question. I say use of force is different from from personal safety, but it was just an interesting sort of thought process to see where, where, where you're at with it. Um, well, the use of force, it depends on on how you're using the use of force, right? So you can yeah. have, um, you can, you know, the 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 pressure points that we use in our, in the system are all aimed at um, at different organs. So they're not just for jujitsu as well. So this is the old system, right? So you know they're they're centered around um around the organs so therefore when you hit it it's going to have more effect there's going to be also sensitive areas that enables you to disengage the enemy so mm -hmm. if you're on the floor one of the things that we want to do is get up straight away we don't want to be running around you know everyone now because of bjj and i've got nothing against bjj mm -hmm. um thinks that jujitsu is about rolling around on the floor there's, there can be an element of that, but but also to to disengage with someone, as you say, you know, with with a samurai, they weren't just bringing out their swords and chopping off heads because 
they had a level of professionalism. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, as an osteopath, can't go around keeping getting in punch ups all the time because otherwise I can lose my license. So you have the same level of, of um, professionalism with that as well. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah, I think yeah. In, yeah, it's 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 an interesting point. I don't think it, you know, I don't think you'll get, uh, you know, the, the, I from my from what I've seen, I don't think there'll be agreement on it with, through across the board. It's one of them. It's the, probably the uh, the uh, the thing he's out on it, isn't it? The um, what am I looking for? Jury, the jury, the jury. yeah, the jury's out on it, I suppose. But it's uh, yeah, it is one of them. Um, I suppose a final question for you before we tie this up is how do we make um, self-defence training more sort of open and transparent for people who might not my, my my company and where I'm trying to go with things is to try and make it so that I, I personally believe that certain martial arts have made and certain self-defence systems have made it um, difficult for, for they they've been pushed towards a certain type of person um, and not necessarily the people who need it uh, that's my personal view yeah. again that that's 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 not across the board and I wouldn't like to blanketly say that's the case but I do think that there's for a large proportion of things the people who need self-defense or need personal safety have been maybe let down by who they're being they're not being marketed to correctly so how do how does an industry like this market better towards people who need need it? That's a really long winded way of <laughs> going about it. I'm sorry, but yeah, that's all right. Um, I think um, I think you've got to be truthful with with yourself and mm -hmm. and also with your market. Um, most most people that start martial arts normally start it up because of self-defense levels. Mm -hmm. If they're starting straight away from being an adult, um, unless their kids are already doing it, you know, um, I, I think personally, again, that, that phrase fit for purpose. So if you're doing it as a self-defense, um, for yourself, your own self-defense and not for, other things then smaller classes um knowing the situation that the people are going to be in so you know it's it's no good teaching uh false on false or or anything else if if uh <laughs> that person's going to be in a school and they're just yeah. dealing with um anti-social children yeah. Um, a lot of the time, the classes, martial arts classes, are normally big, so it's intimidating. And if you've already been attacked, or you've been in some kind of domestic violence or anything like that, then the last thing you want is further intimidation. Yeah. Um, I think uh, my friend Sean the other week I pretty just much about, put it. Yeah, I think I think I was just about to say about Sean. That, yeah, sorry, go on, Karen, mate. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, you know, I think I think he's got an excellent um, formula there. You know, I I I don't tell people that what I do as jujitsu is self defense. No, you know, you you can we do a section of it, but I don't want people coming along and thinking they're gonna walk down the street and do this, this, and this. Um, so that's why I tend to sort of keep it. To, small groups maybe specialized groups whatever it depends on what they want but um i think the the best bet is, is as i say with, with what how sean's got it small groups individuals um maybe women only men only then occasionally if they want to mix mix because you know at the end of the day a man gripping you if you've been in a, in a, some kind of situation that's going to get you over that fear. My yeah. last patient today, fear is there for a reason. 
And you need to overcome that fear, whether it's a fear of doing interviews. You know, this, <laughs> when I was a kid, this would have been razor blades down my throat. Yeah. Know? Reading out loud in front of the ki kids, everyone taking the piss because I, you know, did a bit of stuttering and all this sort of thing. Um, so you have to come over that, that set of fear. And the way Sean has his um, classes is, is very much in that way. I think he's doing a wonderful job. No, I think so too. I think and, I and Angie, I better not leave Angie. I'm, I'm no, sure definitely, definitely she'll not. Have my no. guts for Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. No. Um, yeah, I think that they're. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, I, I'm just trying to get myself into a position where I can get down there and, and get amongst it a little bit, to be honest. But it's a case of mm -hmm. just finding the time, to be fair. Um, but yeah, no, I think that that's um, you know, I think personally that since the uh, and. A number of people have, have said about it since the sort of that horrendousness with sort of the Sarah Everard thing last year um, with, with that that creature, um, who I won't mention his name. Um, I think that there's a massive opportunity there now that we we as an industry need to be pushing towards to get give people who who need that element of you know. I think it's confidence building. I think it's confidence building. I think it's, I did a poster the other day. I did a poster the other day that I put out that's going to be like part of my marketing, I suppose, around um, mm -hmm. around uh, sort of self-defense. And it, and it was, I have, I'm in a mentorship group where I, I spoke to some, like I, I sort of sent it in there for a bit of feedback on it. Um, not, they're not self-defense people, but they're general people. And at the end of the day, that's what you need. You need feedback from people who are, you know, are going to see that sort of information. And the big thing that came back, which I found slightly disappointing, was the picture was of a lady. I mean, it was initially a different picture, but I changed it to a picture of um, a group of females in a in a bar situation, looking happy, having having a drink and stuff. And one of the bits that came back to me was around: um, could I change it so that it's somebody sat at a bus stop? Um, sat at a bus stop on their own and stuff so instead of marketing for the end result looking at it from the fear aspect because and it's no dig at the person but that that there is a generalized view i think um that amongst a certain population that um if females are going out for an alcoholic drink um it's their own fault if they get attacked and this was what was said and it was i found that very very disconcerting that that's still out there um as as an idea that and i hate that fact i hate the fact of well hang on a minute why why shouldn't somebody go out and have, have a drink it's not that you know at the end of the day that's not you know they don't choose to be attacked but what we can do as an industry is go hang on a minute you, you know the, you know you can go out and do these things but be aware of this this and this rather than you know blame well, that's, that's again that's the whole self-defense thing isn't it it's, it's not necessarily a, a practical thing so this is one of the reasons why I was saying about the, the false um, security side of uh, false confidence. Yeah. You know, yes, you should be able to do this. You should be able to do that. If I've just bought myself a Rolex, I should be able to walk down the, mm -hmm. the street saying, look at my Rolex. It would bring a lot of attention to me and um, probably end up with me not having a Rolex at the end of it. Yeah. Um, so you have to you have to um, realize that what's it what your surroundings are, are looking at. So again, you know, Kelly McCann actually said that there used to be a guy that um, would walk down this dark alleyway. He was, a, he was a policeman, and and he said, "Why are you walking down?" He goes, "This way, I've got a gun." And he's like, mm -hmm. "But you don't want to draw that gun." You yeah. don't want to get yourself into that situation. And absolutely. You know, again, it's it's this whole thing of making people aware of their own awareness. Yes, you should be able to go out and have a drink and have fun. But then you then have to then do something around that. So when you're going home, you don't go home on your own. And that's the, that's the catalyst. I think that from my point of view, I just find it... Um... 
you know, and, and it is out there, isn't it? You know, and, and I should, I'm not surprised by any of it, but they're, you know, they're still being that stigma attached to sort of. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know. But but that's that's people, isn't it? This yeah, that's the knuckle, that's the knuckle um, grazers. Yeah. But again, you know, what one of the actually, this is a really, I found this really important. One thing that Kelly said was, a criminal wants an easy day, just like mm -hmm. you and I. And that's they're it. doing their job. So they're going to go for the easy job. That's going to make them lots of money or give them whatever they want to give, you know? Mm -hmm. And that, as I say, that's what, that's what I think self-defense should be. Mm -hmm. Being aware, but not being paranoid, there's a difference. You know, I say to, to people, look around, but don't look around like a chicken. So you're like, oh, my God, what's happening? Yeah. Um, and just, just don't go in the shitty areas if you can. It's one of them, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah. If you can, you can avoid them. If you live there, well, unfortunately, it is what it is. If, if you live there, there's a different kettle or work there. There's a different kettle of fish, yeah? Well, yeah no, no, this is, again, if you're being put, if you're putting yourself into the situation of being, um, of of being in the situation because of work or whatever, that's different. Yeah. But the average person, you know, shouldn't go into a place where you just see someone getting thrown out <laughs> physically. <laughs> We've all we've all done it. We've all, yeah. thought, oh, that, look, that looks fun. That looks like a fun place to go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mate, thank you so much for doing this tonight. Um, I know it's uh, you know we, we got there eventually, and we got this this uh, squared away. Um, last sort of thing I ask everybody is um, if people want more information about you and your dad and what you you guys are doing, where can they sort of find yeah. that type of information? Um. On our website, www.tenukai.com. Okay, brilliant. Um, and they can contact us directly. Yeah. Um, I'm on Facebook. Everyone's on Facebook. Yeah. Um, LinkedIn. I'm on. I'm in LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, you've, got, you've got a nice. You've got a nice little YouTube channel. I did see. I did see. There's a. I've a got a nice YouTube. little YouTube channel. You can yeah. contact us through there. Yeah. That's all good. Yeah. Nice. Um, My father's bringing a book out soon as well, so that should be on. That should be within the next couple of months. Brilliant. It's on the traditional side, but. Yeah. No. It's all useful. It's all absolutely useful. Yeah. Um. Thank you so much for doing this again, and uh, yeah. You're we'll, welcome. Uh, We'll, we'll crack on soon. Take care. All right. Cheers. Okay. And you, Matt. See you. Bye-bye. Don't go yet. <laughs>